everybody, and welcome to, what is today, Thursday? Thursday's edition of Big Blue Kickoff Live right here on Giants.com and the Giants Mobile app. But this is the holiday on Monday, Jonathan Casillas. It messes up my whole week. I can't figure out what day it is. I'm only worried about this weekend because my birthday is Saturday, so I'm not really worried about nothing else. But I'll tell you what, though. after this, well, That's not true because you just the, talked about the other thing you worry about at lunch. After... <laughs> <laughs> After this past weekend, I got to Wednesday. Was like, what is today? I didn't know what today day was, and it, the week when it happens like that, and it's almost like you get an extended weekend because Friday's pretty much Saturday when you get a weekend like that. Sunday is another Saturday, so it's like you got three Saturdays in a row, and then Monday comes around. Monday's now Sunday. So, it, I mean, it threw me for a loop the whole week. I didn't know what day it was. If only I lived a life where my Fridays were like my Saturdays. But <laughs> not, not, not all of us can be Jonathan Casillas. 201-939-4513. All right, we're continuing our division uh, rankings in the NFC East. We go position by position. We have 12 categories. We rank the teams one through four, add up the points, and we see uh, which team has the most points uh, moving forward here. So yesterday you got the incorrect rankings with Paul Dottino and Lance Meadow. You got the wrong ones. Today you're going to get the correct ones with Jonathan Casillas and I. So, And we will take your calls after we do our rankings. Comment on what Paul Lance did yesterday. Yell at us. Whatever you want. Give your own. 201-939-4513. But this probably exercise is going to take us probably till 1 o'clock, around 25 minutes, 30 minutes. So be patient. But we will get to your calls when we're done with this. All right. I will... Sort quickly out Lance and Paul yesterday, JC, because I did the right. math on this yesterday. So, Detino came out, 34 total points for the Eagles, 33 total points for the Giants, 30 points for Dallas, and 23 points for Washington. Paul always figures out a way to boost the Giants up there as yeah, high as he possibly sure. can. Uh, Lance went 39 points for the Eagles, 36 points for Dallas, 29 points for the Giants, and only 16 for Washington. And then we'll I have mine added up now, but I'm not going to spoil yeah, that until I, I go I through the individual ones. So. No, I, I'm, I have it here. I'm going to track it okay. as we go, and okay, I will good. add that up at the end, okay? Good, okay? Good. All right, I will give you the honors. This is the first time you're doing this, <clears> JC. <throat> yes. So let's start with quarterback. Give me your one through four NFC East quarterback rankings. Okay, so I think number one has to be Jalen Hurts for me. I agree um, with you, by the way. I'm, I'm on board with that. Yeah, of course, this was his real, like, first year taking off mm-hmm. and really being the guy that, you know, that the reason why he got drafted, you know, the reason why you have a franchise quarterback, the reason why you pay a guy, he took his teams to the Super Bowl. And he was only three points short, right? And then I look at uh, Dak as number two. So and by I the way, Dallas. I think Hurts still has a little work to do as a passer, by the way. Yes. but. His effect on their a, running game. He's a winner. Um, he is, he's, a, he's a winner, and yeah, he's a dual threat. And he gets better every year. And he's efficient. Yeah. And he that. doesn't make a lot of mistakes. All and that. he's the reason why they yep. went to the Super Bowl, right? 100%. And, and by that, the way, yeah. he was the best player on that roster in the Super Bowl against right. the Chiefs. He was right. phenomenal. For sure. Go ahead. He was, he was great. I mean, to score 35 points and still lose with a defense that was as good. We're not talking about the Eagles right now. We're just... <laughs> Okay, let's just finish. Hurts was very good. Let's just leave it at that. So uh, Dak, by by far, has the best resume. You know, Dak Dak is a guy who's won a lot of games, inconsistent, not that well in the playoffs. I think he's 2-4. and He was like 0-3 at one point. 2-3 or 2-4. Yeah, maybe 2-4. That That might be right. So for me, uh, I got Dak second, and then Daniel Jones, or excuse me, Daniel Jones, New York, the Giants, number three. And very similar to Hertz in the dual threat that he possesses, and he's become a more efficient quarterback. If you would have asked me this prior to last year, I would have probably not had him so high up. But look, Daniel Jones, I think he's a very capable guy, and I think the Giants, they're learning how to use him more. And I got Washington Commanders as number four. Yeah, I'm with you. My, our rankings are identical. So, mm-hmm. look, I, I think Dak gets a lot of heat for his turnovers last year, and understandably so, but that's not been a problem he's had most of his right. career. Mm-hmm. I think it was a one-off. You look at some of the turnovers, there's a lot of bad I hope it passes. wasn't a one-off. I hope it well, wasn't. Correct. I hope he throws a lot of more interceptions this year. He tried to fit the ball into a lot of tight spaces last <laughs> yeah. year. Balls were getting batted up in the air, balls off his receiver's hands, stuff like that. I expect that's going to get better this year. I agree, Daniel Jones is three, dual threat to your point. I think you hope... He just becomes a more productive overall passer this year. Keeps the turnover downs, but it's just a more uh, productive passer. But, yeah, I, I think the, for me the quarterback rankings were pretty easy. Yeah, right. I think – I think Lance had Dak ahead of him yes, because I, yeah. of body of work. I have these here. I, I did but not I, listen to that show I didn't go body yesterday. of work as a high criteria off of – but basically what no, they is, did last year. Well, no, this is what the – this year, what quarterback do you want? Right. And I think – I'm with you. I would pick Hurts over Dak. Would it shock me? 
if we got to next year and Dak had moved ahead of Hurts, that would or Doc that Dak has fallen backwards and Daniel Jones moved up. Yeah, that wouldn't shock me. Right. Either. So I'm with you 100. Yep. All right, let, let's go running back. I thought this was fairly easy too, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, I had the Giants at number one here, JC. I just think having that number one guy is a yep. big deal, and it's Saquon Barkley, and he's a full time back. Matt Braid is a good enough backup, and, and for me, that dominant one A back, which I'm not even sure anyone else in the division. Has well, that I think guy. Dallas has it, but he's coming off an injury. Yeah, and he, I don't know if he can carry the workload that Barkley right, does either. Right, because he truly hasn't yeah. carried the workload. I got you. Yeah. But yeah, so okay, so we agree. They're number one. Yep. I have Pollard and Dallas at number two. Now okay. I understand that they have no depth there. Okay. And that's a problem. My guess is that before the year starts, Ezekiel will be back on that team on a low dollar contract. Okay. Okay. All right. That's my bet. But again, I'm putting more weight into the star at the position. Right. So I have Dallas second. Who is your second team? At the My second spot? team is the Commanders, Washington. Okay. I think Tell Brian Robinson is an absolute stud. I think he's a beast. And I think what they do offensively, they're going to give him the ball a lot. I do agree with that, too. I'm just not sure how explosive he is. Like, he's a grinder. Yeah, he is. Yeah, but, I mean, Ezekiel Elliott's not that explosive as a player. Never was explosive as a player. Absolutely. But his first three years, he was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Absolutely phenomenal because he was a grinder. Perfect. All right, so you got Giants one. Washington two. two. Who's your third team? I got Philly, and even though they lost, uh, what's his name? The, uh, the uh, Manuel Sanders. Yes, not Manuel. Miles Sanders. Sanders. Miles Sanders. Gosh, I'm so bad with names. Well, we we actually were talking about Miles Sanders <laughs> earlier today with somebody. So, so I mean, Manuel um, Sanders. Part see, of it. look, see. <laughs> no, I did it. <laughs> uh, I think Philly. They had the overall depth. Mm -hmm. I, I think they 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 and they still have it because they added they added a, a Swift and they still got Gamewell, Penny, and Scott. So they have the overall depth. I think they got the deepest, I think, running back room out of uh, the, the group. But I don't think – I I look, Washington, they, they were a team that maybe weren't – they were a playoff team halfway through the year because of their run game. Yeah, they only finished a half game behind the Giants. Because of their run game yeah, and their defense. So that's why I kind of gave Washington the second. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Dallas is last because of the Parsons injury. Just don't know how he's going to be when he Pollard, comes back. Pollard injury, yeah. Pop, Pollard. I'm horrible. Yeah, and I'm looking yeah, right at I, it too. I I, I, I I had Philly at three, though. Now that I'm looking at it, I might swap them in Washington. I won't change it, but but look, I think Brian Robinson's fine. I think he's like a league average type of running back. And my issue with Philly, That's it. I think he's better than that. Well, well he'll have a chance to prove it. To yeah, that's true. And Antonio Gibson is 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 a good kind of third down guy. Yes. My problem with Philly is that they're two guys I would consider number one backs, Swift. And Penny. Penny. They can't mm -hmm. stay healthy. Like, they cannot stay healthy. So, when, when, not if, when those two guys get hurt, yeah. can it gain well? Is, is he carrying the load for you? Is it 5-7 Boston and, Scott? And, but this is the thing, too. That's what and worries me about And I know we're not that. really supposed to do this because we're doing sp uh, position-specific rankings. I feel like that... The Dallas offensive line. I know we're not supposed to think about it. We'll get to the old line. But it matters when you talk about how good a running back is, right? Or no? No, I mean, I, I think it impacts their overall production, bit, right? that's for sure. It definitely does. All right, let's go wide receiver and here. And this list is, you said that was easy. It's not. None <laughs> of them. I think the only one was probably the easiest was probably quarterback. Well, I said easy. I, when I said easy, I was more meant the, the, the number one team was easy for me on that list. I, yeah, right. I got you. The other ones were tough. They're all tough, though. If you get number one, yes. two, three, and four are going to be hard. You had identical <laughs> rankings to Detino on that, by the way. Okay. Um, and Lance had Philly first because he's obsessed with depth. That's all he cares about is depth. depth yes, depth. That's this what, is true. That, that's his obsession. Uh, he had Giants, too. Washington three and Dallas. So everyone at Dallas four except for me and I had Dallas two. We'll see how that works out. Maybe I'll look like a fool at the end of the year. All right, let's go to wide receiver next. Uh, this for me, JC, it was tough at the top. I went yeah. back and forth on two teams. Where did you Same land? Same thing. I think this, the two teams, Dallas and Philly, yep. you go back and forth. with. But I put Dallas first. They have an all-pro already there with CD. And then they added Brandon Cooks, who I think is tremendous, and Gallup as well. And then, of course, A.J. Brown, another All-Pro, and Devontae Smith. I think they're the best one-two punch. And that's why I put Philly first. Yeah. But it was close. But then adding Brandon Cooks to that one-two up in Dallas, I feel like that edged that one-two out from Philly. And then I had uh, Washington third. I almost feel, I feel bad for Washington. Here, they have good receivers. Absolutely. But 
just Dallas and Philly's and better. And Dotson, uh, and then New York, you know, hopefully New York can move up the list after this year. But as of right now, they don't have anybody on the roster that has done what a lot of the other receivers have done on other teams. Well, and again, I think Giant fans might get annoyed about this, but the Giants do a very good depth at wide receiver. And, and all of us had, had the Giants last year, by the way. Um, Tino was like me. He had Philly first, Dallas second. Meadow was like you. He had Dallas first, Philly second. I, I think it's. I could see it going either way. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not gonna. You know, get on anybody for that decision. And I just think when you look at the Giants at wide receiver, and look, this is fine. This is what they did. They threw numbers at the problems. If you look at the Giants wide receiver group, which one of those guys would be a one or a two on either one of the NFC East teams? It's a tough go. That's may, rough. May, maybe at the end of the year, right? But as change. of right now. As of right now, you would take Dotson, McLaurin, Brown, Smith, Lamb, Cooks, and maybe even Gallup. Right. Over, over the, everybody the group. Over the group. The Giants so you probably roster. would. And again, the Giants have a lot of young guys. They yep. have guys coming back from injury, guys that are unproven that I think these guys can develop and get there. But right now, again, based on just what you've done in the league, I, I, think, agree. It's, I, think, I, I think it's hard to make that yeah. argument. All right. Let's go to tight end here. And all of us, well, me, Paul, and Lance all had the Giants at number one. Yes. Did you as well? Yes, I did. Okay. I, I got, just think Waller is the best yeah. player. Yeah, Waller is – I mean, there's there's nobody else. There's only like one or two other tight ends in the league that can do what he does in right. the passing game. And then you add Bellinger, who is, a, I think, a Gronkowski-ish, where he can do it receiving-wise, and he can block, and he's a willing blocker, blocker and he's a, bro, he's a huge – Human being. Yeah, two-way player. And then I got uh, Philly next with Godert because he, I feel like he's been the most consistent. All of us at Philly second Even more well. consistent than Waller, believe it or oh, not. Oh, yeah, I would say more consistent. Not yet. the highs, not but as just explosive, consistent. But more right, consistent. just more yep, consistent. I agree with you. Logan Thomas, because I feel like he actually, you know, converting over from quarterback, I think he's had a pretty good career. And then I agree. the last uh, is Dallas. Uh, I just feel like. No, look, they're running out of rookie and screw yeah. maker. They have two second-year guys in Ferguson and Pendershot, right? So yeah. I'm with you. I, I think it's hard to put Dallas. I have Dallas last two. Lance had Dallas third, Washington fourth. You know, Logan Thomas, he's not the player he used to be with all the injuries. But I think that's... He's still capable, I believe so. All of us are in the same neighborhood there. Yeah, right. All right, let's go O-line here. Uh, this, the... The, this one was also, I think, fairly straightforward for me. This one was not really difficult for me. I think the Eagles are clearly number one here. Yes. Um, with Lane Johnson, Three Lailata, all pros. Kelsey. And, you know, then they got two young guys. You know, Cam Jurgens is stepping in there. He's going to play a role now at guard. So they have a really, really, really good option. I got Philly so number one. Dallas uh, is number Dallas two. Dallas is number two. It's, it's not as dominant they used to be. But, you know, Biotish, their center, and I don't know if he's a Pro Bowl player, but he did make the Pro Bowl last yep. year. Zach Martin's still great. When Tyron Smith is healthy, he's still a good player. And, you know, Terrence Steele has and has turned into a, a pretty decent right tackle. And then their first-round pick last year, Smith, he played better at left tackle than he did at guard last year. And I know he's going to be a guard as long as Tyron's out there at left tackle. So I think Dallas was was pretty clearly number two. And I thought the Giants were pretty clearly number three. Yep. Just because got the of, best player probably of, among the offensive line. Uh, and Andrew Thomas. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can definitely argue the three uh, top Philly guys because they're all really good. They yep. all made mm -hmm. to the. Uh, they were they were all all pro. Zach Martin would be in that conversation too. Yes, mm -hmm. and then and then I go Washington, and I got I put Nick Gates down because I don't know if everybody knows that, but Nick Gates is now the starting center for the Washington Commanders. So. All right, so me and you had the same exact rankings there for Paul and Lance. Uh, all of us had the same exact offensive line rankings. How about that? All right, so that one was actually pretty clear for everybody. All right, so offensive points, because I like to break this down, offense, defense. So okay. I had 13 offensive points for the Giants. You had, uh -oh. let's see, no, no, don't, 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 uh-oh on me. Uh, six, seven, two, six, seven. You had the same thing. You also had 13, so we had the same there. Dallas offensive points. You had 12. I had 13. Philly, I had 17 offensive points for them. You had 18, no, 16 offensive points for them. And Washington, I had seven offensive points for them. You had nine offensive points for them. All right, let's go over to defense. Defensive line now, JC. This is where it starts getting difficult. Because there are some darn good defensive lines, and this is more defensive tackle than defensive yes. line. This is not your edge players. So, you look at these groups, 
The only easy one for me here was Dallas being last because they yes. just don't have very good defensive tackles. Yes. So that's funny. We agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Now, but how do you rank the first three? Because I think it's a really good debate here. Because I think Dexter Lawrence and Leonard Williams as a pair compared to Jonathan Allen and Deron um, Payne. Deron Payne. Thank you. I was having a mental block yep. there. As a pair, is a really really close discussion. Yes. I think it's really really tight. I think I like the Commanders. You know depth there maybe a little bit more so I gave the commanders uh first place a defensive tackle and I gave the Giants in second and I put Philly third Philly how about third. you that's the exact order that I have all right and my notes on Deron Payne and Allen is that they're both in their primes they're both Dexter Lawrence prime yeah they are right now and they're top 10 in TFLs they're both basically all pro type of players they're that good if no one has seen them play imagine Dexter Lawrence Two of them. I think they're that good. Um, and then, of course, Dexter Lawrence being the all-pro. Get the Giants up there. And then Philly. Philly has a great defensive line, but Cox is really old. He's old. And then you got the young guys that they brought in. Jordan Davis, uh, high draft pick. Didn't really play as much as... No, he didn't. He only played like 30% of the snaps. You know, and then they got the Jalen Carter kid who's probably going to be good, but... He's young. They're young. They haven't proven anything. The Eagles could be first on this list next year. Right. For sure. They could be first. Yes, depending on what Jalen Carter does. Right, but they're not there yet. They're not there The Giants had a good depth too, right? Like Nacho is a good backup defensive lineman, and Eshawn Robinson's a very good defensive tackle. So I think adding those two guys at depth is what put the Giants over Philadelphia for me. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think, like I said, Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen, watching them just do work, and I'm not even looking at nobody else on the depth chart, but just them two alone, they probably got the best interior D lineman in the league. And I think the Giants are right close behind them, but I don't think you could do Leonard Williams compared to neither one of those guys right now at Leonard Williams' age. No, that's fair. And Leonard Williams is still a really good player. He's, yes, still, he he's is. probably a better player than anyone the Eagles have, I would say. Okay. I think that's probably fair. I think he's the flip of this way. I think he's probably it's that Jalen Carter. Who knows how good he's going to be? I mean, he. I mean, if he wants to be, that's what I'm saying. Be the we best we just don't football. know. That's the that's the interesting <clears throat> thing about this because you know you're going off of what guys have done, right? But at the same time, you can't really do that because Leonard Williams will be on the list, dude. That's the you scary... know what I mean? Like, he, yeah, because Leonard Williams' body of work will put him on the list, but. Jalen Carter's coming in. There's guys coming in that you got to kind of think they're going to be decent, but then you got to go off what guys did last year Dude, and this, what guys are going to probably do this year. This is the scary thing about Philly. You know, we talk about all these guys, and they have, like, they have young guys that they haven't even had to play yet that are first and second round picks. Yep. Like, yep. they just keep restocking. It's unbelievable. Anyway, yes. all right, let's go to edge players here. Uh, the edge players for me, I, I thought was difficult. See, I went Dallas first year. Because I think they have the best individual edge player in the division in Michael Parsons. In Michael Parsons. Yeah, and that's what I'm counting him as. Because I think that's where they're going to play him mostly this year. And frankly, Demarcus Lawrence is probably a top three or four edge player in the division. So I have Dallas in number one at edge. But this was not an easy one for me. How about you, Jason? Yeah, this one was... Uh, you know what? You know what? This one was, for me, a little bit easier because of numbers. What Philly did last year with their edge rushers, they had three guys over 10, if I'm not mistaken, at the edge. Josh, Shett, Josh Sweat, Brandon Graham, and Hassan Reddick. And Hassan Reddick. Yeah, yep. so mm-hmm. they had three guys from the edge positions yeah, over 10 sacks, Hassan Reddick being the all-pro. I gave Philly to Nada number one. I gave Dallas number two, of course, Michael, Michael Parsons. And we saw what Lawrence did to us week three, was it? Early last in the year, year yes, yeah, September, whatever it was. destroyed us. And then... There's a the similar arguments for New York and Washington. They have a lot of guys that potentially can get to the quarterback, but there's a lot of questions about their health, right? Thibodeau, Ojolari, those are two guys. Thibodeau being in the second year, Ojolari being in his fourth, third, third year. Chase Young and coming off the injury. Yes, I'm saying comparing mm-hmm. them to Chase Young. Chase Young has a high upside, but he's never really put it together. Yeah. Uh, probably pointing towards his health a little bit and. Thibodeau and Ojolar, you can say the same thing about, you know, very good uh, uh, players, potential is very high, they're very good players in college, but they just really haven't put out that output quite yet because I think because of health. So uh, Philly, Dallas, uh, Giants, and then Washington uh, last. All right, I swapped those guys, so I'm a little bit different. I have Dallas one, 
a Philly tubes. I, I, Brandon Graham is going to stop doing this at some point, right? He has to, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's almost 35 years Bro, old. Bro, I played it against to, him in college, just, I, just to let you know that. It has to stop yeah. at some point. I mean, mm-hmm. it's really unbelievable. Uh, I have them second. I gave Washington the, the edge over the Giants just because I think Montez Sweat is, if you take Washington and the Giants edge rushers together, who's the first guy you take out of, the, out of, those, out of that group? Uh, say that again. If you combine Washington and the Giants edge edge players together, edge players. who do you think the best individual player is? I think it's Montez Sweat. Yeah, that's why I put Washington ahead of the Giants. I got you. I see what you're saying. And and the, and the Chase thing, Chase Young thing is worrisome. Yeah, I, I don't know how that's I don't know how that's going to go for him. They didn't pick up the fifth year option, right? So we'll see how that ends up. But yeah. you know, it is what it is. He's well, he's coming off that ACL. Did he end up playing? Did Young end up playing in the last year? Did he play like a game or two? Or did he just sit out the whole year? I don't. I know they were talking about him coming back. I just don't remember, remember him playing snaps though. I'm trying to remember. Did he ever come back and play? And if he did, he wasn't. Dom, look that up for me. Impactful, right? I think. No, he no. If he played, he was not very impactful. Right. That is true. So I'm rolling the dice there a little bit on Chase Young, but that's how I have that ranked. All right, let's go to off-ball linebacker here. How did you have him ranked? Off-ball middle linebackers, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So uh, this one, this one was hard. Um, but I had to go with... I this guess, is not a position of strength in the proven, division, by the way. Yes, true. <laughs> I guess I would say proven because it, that's not, that's a poor ter- a term to use. But I guess a guy that has made a lot of plays for this team uh, in Leighton Van Der Esch mm-hmm. for Dallas. So I, I put Dallas first. All right, so, so did Paul and Lance. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I put... Because Okereke had, I feel like, a phenomenal year last year. And I think the potential to be a star in Wings defense with them adding to the blitz, he might be number one in that middle linebacker position at the end of the year, but I got New York number number two. I swapped those two, by the way. The Giants at one, because to your point, because I think Okereke is the best player. But I think in his defense, spot. he's going to shine. I, I just think he's really good. So I think he's going to shine. That's why too. I put the, the, the Giants over the Cowboys, because I okay. think Okereke is a better player than Van Der Esch, yes. which is why I put them first. Now nah, I kind of want to switch it, but I'll just leave it. <laughs> I'll leave it how it is. And then Philly and Washington. No, no don't feel bad. To round up. Both the Tino and Lance at Dallas won. Okay. Yeah, I got Philly. So I got Dallas, uh, Giants, Philly, Washington. Yep. So me, me and you have the same uh, three and four there. Just frankly, Philly and Washington. Like, Philly lost both their inside linebackers. Yeah. So Nicobe Dean, who's now going to be a, get him, one of those. I just those interviewed him, but he's small, mm-hmm. not a big guy, mm-hmm. but so was Jonathan Vilma. He was small, he was smart, and he could run. And he had a great career. You know, so I kind of throw him in that category Small, too. Smart and could run. I think that's a good. Yeah. I think that's a good, good combination there. Let's see. Do we have uh, you got you got Chase Young note on me here. Young, he played three games. He had two sacks, huh? In week 18. Two sacks in week eighteen, huh? Interesting. So I didn't at the that. end, right? Yeah. So he played only, and I think in his three games, I think he probably didn't play a whole lot of snaps in the first couple. All right, let's go to corner now, JC, and Dallas for me is one. You know, adding Stephon Gilmore with Trayvon yeah. Diggs. It was close between them and Philly. I like Dallas's third corner better than I like the Eagles' third corner. I think Jordan Lewis is a pretty good player. I think Dallas has a little bit more depth there. Bradbury is still a little bit older. Though Gilmore's older too, but Trayvon Diggs isn't. So I went Dallas one here, and I went Philly two. And then I think there's a, a fairly steep drop-off over those top two. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I got Dallas number one. When you add a former defensive player of the year— to your already talented, uh, you know, uh, uh, defensive backfield, with Diggs being the interception machine that he is, uh, you know, that's a definitely a formidable uh, crew against any wide receiver core and any corner or cornerback or offense that they're going to go against. And then you got a uh, big play Slay, who has made a lot of big plays, and then Bradbury coming off of another All Pro year. Um, I think they're, you know, light years ahead. Those two teams are a lot years ahead of the Giants. Washington, the Giants are trying to figure out who's going to be the opposite cornerback from Adore, yeah. right? So the Giants are still trying to figure that out. And Washington, I was looking at their roster and looking at their stats. I'm like, I don't really know those guys. I remember watching them if play. Fuller's fine. But, but I remember watching them yeah. play, and they didn't really do anything for me. So I put Washington at the end. Here's the thing. The Giants and Washington will both be sending out a rookie corner to start probably. Emmanuel yes. Forbes and Deontay Banks. I like Banks better. And I like Adoree Jackson better than I like Fuller for go. Washington. Okay. So that, that made it pretty easy for right. me to be honest with you. So right. I, I'm with you. I had the Giants at, at three, and I had Washington uh, in last there. So let's go to safety. And I went back and forth. I actually did a cross out. I had the Giants one here for a second. And then I'm like, you know what? 
Even though I think McKinney's the best individual player, I like Dallas's depth a little bit better. So I ended up going Dallas, one here at safety. J. Ron Curse is a really good player. Uh, Malik Hooker is a good player. Um, they, who's their other safety? There Donovan Wilson. There? Yeah, Donovan Wilson yeah. is, is, is also I got Dallas one. a good, strong safety. So both of us have Dallas one, and so did Tino and Meadow. So we were all kind of uh, in line with that. And by the way, Tino and Meadow had Philly one at corner, Dallas two. Then they had Giants three and, and Washington four. So, yeah, I'm with you. I, I So, yeah, I, I I think Dallas has the best group of safeties, and I think the Giants are second because of, because of, of, of McKinney. McKinney. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got, so I got Philly uh, next because I feel like Blankenship and Edmonds had – pretty decent years last year they did they held up they made some plays and i remember like i'm going off of what i remember from them as well yeah yeah, of course and watching some of these guys play against the giants and i feel like they had pretty good uh you know contests against the giants and i think mckinney's probably the best safety in the division yes i think last year with him being limited because of his hand of course we couldn't see his his growth from the year prior as we we probably could have and should have seen. He's got to stay healthy, man. And he definitely has to stay healthy and he has to stay on the field because I, I think he has, I mean, he has such great hips to flip and turn and he has such great range and he's a long, he's like a Sean Taylor body-wise where he's tall and long and can cover. I mean, you can't hit anybody how Sean Taylor used to hit them, so that physical part is out the game. <laughs> and then I got Washington last. So Dallas, Philly, uh, Giants, and Washington uh, to follow. All right, so now I'm adding up our defense here. Then we have two more categories, folks, and we will be, we'll get to your calls. I do see you guys online here. Don't worry, we will get to you. Um, so let's see. That's six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so we are Washington rankings, JC, for defense. We're exactly the same. We both had them for nine defensive points. Philadelphia, I had Philadelphia for 12 defensive points. You had them for 14 defensive points. Dallas, we both had 16 defensive points, the best the best defense in the division, which, by the way, I think that's going to be the case this year, so I think that's probably accurate, right? Okay. And then the Giants, you had 11 points for them on defense. I had the Giants with 13 points on defense. Pardon me. And then offense, you had Philly as the top offense, Giants as the second-best offense, Dallas as the third-best offense. And we'll get into the nuance of that in a second. All right, now we'll do special teams. And, you know, special teams is hard because you don't really know yeah. about coverage units. So... I really swayed my, and you know what? You just don't return that much anymore. I know, especially that with the kickoff rule, with the fair catch and everything. Yeah, I want to get your take on that, by the way. Yeah, I was pissed. I'm sure week. I'm sure you are. <laughs> um, to me, the most important spot is the field goal kicker. You need okay. to have someone you can depend on to make a big kick. Yeah. And I think Graham Gano is the best place kicker in the division. Okay. I just do. And even though I don't know who the Giants returners are and all that stuff, and their cover teams weren't as good last year, don't care. I do care about the field goal kicker. Yes. So okay. I'm I'm going Giants one here with four points just because I think Graham Gano is terrific. I have the Eagles two because I think Elliott's a, a, a pretty good kicker as well. Dallas three because I like Kavante Turpin, even though I don't know who their field goal kicker is going to be. And then I have Washington coming in at four. Um, my ranking was based off of kind of what I saw last year mm-hmm. in all of the games. And Giants are last for me. Well, no, coverage units-wise, yeah. which is, I know, something that you really value. For sure, because uh, all of their kicking percentages are about, are about 90% in terms of field goal uh, makes. Mm-hmm. They're about 90%. And I think Washington had a drop to about 83 But uh, Philly, New York, and Dallas, they're all, like, in, in a row in 90%. So that kind of took the field. Because I was focusing on field goal. I'm trying to figure out how to do this because it's going to be different this year. You can never – Base, especially all the roster, the Giants roster has improved. Yeah. So I think their special teams going to improve. I'm just going what I felt last year. I think Philly dominated on special teams against not only just the Giants, but other teams as well. So you're going four points for them? Yeah, four points okay. for Philly. And then Dallas is next. Okay. I got the Commanders and New York. And honestly, those might be a, a toss up, but I just remember me being so disappointed in the Giants special teams. No, last look, year. I, I, I'm look, putting them last. I'm, prob- I'm sorry. I I'm, love the Giants, but. Special team was not it last year. And I am probably undervaluing the importance of coverage units. And I'm swaying towards but, much to the but, field goal kicker. You know what, though? The, the, they're taking that away from the, the teams now. They're taking that right. kickoff aspect out. So you only really have one coverage unit, which is punt. No, I guess if your coverage unit's bad, the other team might just go return stuff anyway. Right. <laughs> right? <That's true. laughs> they don't have to take the, they that don't have to take the touch back. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then, and, and then finally, coaching staff. So... Um, you know, I put coach here and I probably should have put coaching staff, uh, to, to even it out. But I think head coach is, is, is kind of the way Paul Lance did it. You ever say they, 
they only did head coach, right? They didn't do coaching staffs for these guys. You weren't here for that? So yeah, I think they no, did No, I head think coach. they were mentioning like uh, offensive and defensive coordinators that were leaving and stuff like that. Oh, were they? Yes. Okay. So you know what? We can do this holistically then. That makes sense. All right. So that'll, that'll actually alter my rankings a little bit. All season, DC's that left. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was mostly Philly. I know, we, I know the Giants kept everybody, so. Dallas, well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll go put through Giants number one. See, I have I have the Eagles at one, okay. and I understand. But now if, if we're counting coordinators, I might actually That's what I kind of consider because I know they had – I don't know who left. Yeah, you I know, know gonna, somebody left or uh, both of them left. No, the Eagles, Eagles lost both their guys. Right. So okay. you know what? I'm gonna make an. I'm gonna make a change. Then I'm gonna boost the Giants up to third to, to first place on my list because they kept all their coordinators right. in place. I agree with that. I'll stick with that. And then you know what? All right. So we're in agreement with the Giants, right? With everyone coming back, Dable, good mind, Cap, yes. a good mind, and Wink's a good defensive coordinator. I had the Eagles at one just because your coach got your team to the Super Bowl. I think that's a big deal. Yep. But I think losing their offensive coordinator with the way they ran that offense last year, I think that really does matter. So losing Shane Steichen, I don't think Gannon, who also got a head coaching job, was a great defensive coordinator. That isn't something that really impacts me that much. They might even, I think, improve I mean, at that, that Super spot. Bowl, boy, they got exposed. Yeah, right? they really did. So, you know, who do you have to? I got Philly. I want to think about it. You got Philly too? Yeah, and I know they lost their OC and their DC. But, man, like I got a lot of like recall back to the games. I just feel like they believe in that dude, Sirianni. You mm -hmm. know, I feel like he's a tough guy that, that people want to play for. You know, I think I want to play for him. I got Washington next with Ron R Rivera and uh, them little girls from Dallas next. Last. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know what? I had Dallas last too. I did have them last. I'm gonna pump them up to second because okay. I think Dan Quinn is phenomenal. Are you as a defensive, defensive coordinator, coordinator? What he did last year? Yeah, I mean they were top two, right? Yeah. Overall, he might last year? he might be a top five defensive coordinator in the sport. Right. And if they could do what they did last year on defense, it's gonna give this division a lot of problems. That's yes. For sure. So I'm gonna put Dallas second. That's not Mike. I want to stress this. That is not Mike McCarthy. <laughs> I am not a I am not a big Mike McCarthy guy. I'm not. I don't think he's a very good coach. Um, but for that, for Dan Quinn, I'll put them second. And then you know, do I think Sirianni's a great coach? But he made the Super Bowl. I, I will leave the Phillies. Uh, the Phillies. I will leave the Eagles at. I will leave the Eagles at five at a uh, at third, and I'll put Washington last year. So that'll give me two. Ron whatever. Rivera? Yeah, I just, Jack Del Rio, eh, whatever, you know. <laughs> I'm not a big enemy believer. I'm just not. I think yeah. he's fine. But he was never the, here's the thing. He was the OC in Kansas City, right? They literally had a passing game coordinator. So he didn't run the passing game. Okay, that's weird. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Mike Kafka that's was their pass game coordinator. Hmm. The guy who went to coach the Bears. What's his name? Uh, help me out here to, who got fired and then he went back there last year for the Chiefs uh, Nagy. yeah Nagy there you go he was their pass game coordinator and he came back after Kafka left he was their pass game coordinator last year <laughs> do I care about the Chiefs running game <laughs> I mean, I seriously, hear you. No, I, hear you. I don't care about the Chiefs running game. I hope Eric B. I hope Eric B. Enemy proves me wrong, and he's great. Well, I don't know. No, I don't. don't. I hope he's you not don't great there. For, for Eric B. Enemy's <laughs> sake, I think he's a good guy, and I hope he does well there. But you run the Chiefs run game. Congratulations. Yeah, no, I hear you. <laughs> All right, cool. So I, I will, I will, I will put them put them at the bottom there. All right. So I'm going to add up JC's points here. For the Giants, you had 13 on offense, 11 on defense. And then you would five total for the other one. So that is a total of 24, 29 points for the Giants. Dallas, you had 12 offense, 16 defense. You had Dallas last on your coaching? Yes. So 32 total points for them. Eagles, you had 16 offense, 14 defense. And you had the Eagles second on your coaching staff? Yes. Okay, so that's – and you had them top on your specials, right? Yes. So that's 37 for them. You had Washington, nine on offense, nine on defense – and then you had them dead last for coaching, or you had them second for coaching? I had them third. You had them third for Philly coaching. Philly was second Perfect. for me. So that's yeah. two, that's four, that's, so you had them for 22 points. And that should add up to that, 120. It does. Good, so my math was right. All right, so our overall rankings here, and mine got adjusted here because I changed my coaches. So I need to do quick math here. Wow, how about that? So I ended up, 
How about that? I end up having Philly, Dallas, and the Giants all tied at 34. <laughs> That's hilarious. Before I made my coaching adjustment, I had Philly at 36, and I had the Giants at 33 and Dallas at 32. They were really close, but then the coaching and then when I coach rejiggered it. Right, because, because I was just doing head coach, right? So and, but funny. then like include coordinators, I think you have to put that into the consideration. I had Washington at 19, UJC had the Eagles at 37. So you would then with the second most to Lance, who had 39. Me and Paul both had him at 34. God, Paul and I are way too close here. That scares the hell out of me. <laughs> um you had Dallas second at 32, right? You had the Giants third at 29. Which is the same that Lance had, and then you had you had the most point, the second most points for Washington with twenty two. The Tino had the most for Washington at twenty three. So we've done these before, I like my list. JC, and the Giants were always clearly third when we did these. Yeah, clearly. Like last year, they were better than Washington. They got closer to Dallas and Philly, but they were still a clear third on yeah. all of our lists. They have closed the distance here to Dallas and point Philadelphia. Total wise, you're saying. Yes. The point total wise. Yeah. Right. And now, this isn't a perfect exercise, right? Because some positions are more important than others. You, would you rather have the best running back or the best wide receivers? Oh, gosh. You'd rather hard. have the best wide receivers. That's a hard question, though. Would you because rather have the, the Giants best, have the best running back and not would the you best rather, wide receivers? Would you rather have the best offensive line or the best tight end? You'd rather have the best offensive line. offensive line. So the Giants, where they've racked up points, are running back, tight end, inside linebacker, safety, special teams. Coach, right? Coach is super important. I'm not yes, going to downplay that. Sure. But what are the premium positions you talk about? Tackle, quarterback, left tackle, quarterback, offensive line, receiver, edge rusher, corner. receiver, mm-hmm. corner. And for those categories, edge rusher, Giants were third or fourth for most of us. Corner, they were third for all of us. Wide receiver, they were last, last. for all of us. Offensive line, they were third for all of us. So the Giants' talent is improving. Yes. But at those premium spots where you think it really impacts winning the most, maybe they're not quite where specifically Dallas and Philadelphia are, yeah. who they dominated those positions, right? Dallas and Philly, 1-2 quarterback. Dallas, Philly, 1-2 at wide receiver. Dallas, Philly, 1-2 offensive line. Dallas, Philly, 1-2 at edge rusher. Dallas, Philly, 1-2 at cornerback, yeah. right? Those are the premium positions. Yep. So the Giants are getting there. They're yep. improving. But and that, I think we that can was, see jumps. But that was the conversation all last year. Yep. You know, the Giants got swept by the Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys. Yep. And then they, they, I mean, they won one and tied one against the Commanders, meaning the Commanders are not too far behind as well. You know, and yeah, we probably are not giving the Commanders enough credit, to be honest with you. No, I and but I think because of uh, the quarterback situation there, Man, that's what it is. You know, and, and their line's not great either. And I mean, just like the Giants, they're not great. At the, the 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 nice and valuable positions, they're not great. They don't have corners. But like when you look at their defense, they're pretty solid on defense, especially yep. in their interior defensive linemen. Mm-hmm. They got some depth on the outside on and some and pass rushers, um, and I think they're a very capable team in terms of what they can do in the run game on offense. Last year, I remember it was I don't know halfway through the season. And they'll be losing a game, and they're running the ball consistently. Yeah, no, they run it. I think that sends a message to what you want your team to be. And, J.C., remember this, too. If Sam Howell wins that job, his final year in North Carolina, he almost rushed for 1,000 yards. Oh, really? He can He's a dual run. Threat. Yeah. So I don't be surprised. I'll bring up his college stats here. I mean, I, I see them running for 50-something percent of the time, 55% of the time, because last year, no matter – who they were playing, no matter how much they were down by, they were running the football. I think that says something to your team. We're going to be physical no matter what. We're not going to fold no matter what. We're going to punch you in your mouth, and we're going to put our physical nature on you from the beginning to the end of the game. I think that says something about the commanders. Sam Howell in his final year in North Carolina, 183 rushes for 828 yards. Man, he was toting that thing, dude, he had and like two hundred carries. And, and dude, you watch, you watch some of the. And he video? had ninety and ninety to two years before that. Eleven rushing touchdowns for Howell in his final year in North Carolina, and dude, he's two hundred and twenty <laughs> pounds now. I'm looking at his face, <laughs> he looks like he's a couple, a couple too many hits running the football with that picture. Um, but look, two hundred twenty pounds at six one—that's not a small man. 
Yeah, but he's not. I mean, he is in Cam Newton now. Yeah, and but for me, it's all about can you absorb hits? Can you go down? Can you slide? Right. Because you look at uh, yeah, somebody yeah. like Lamar Jackson, right? Correct. Lamar Jackson before this year he was before, he was I guess over two hundred pounds this year, but before that he was maybe one ninety. I don't know what he was. A little skinny guy. He's always been skinny. Have never seen him take a big hit. Yeah. Somehow he's figured out how to not get hit by guys that want to take your head off. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, if you get a free shot on the quarterback, you're going to take it. A legal shot as a safety, a linebacker, defensive lineman, and you're running to chase this guy and he cuts back and it's legal, you're going to take the shot. I just haven't seen him take big shots. You get a guy like Cam Newton later in his career, he couldn't avoid him. He was getting hit left and right. Yeah. In the pocket, outside the pocket. You know, Daniel Jones, a guy who hasn't figured out how to not get hit. And Josh Allen's the same way, by the way. That dude gets hit all the time. Yep. So is he is he durable? Can he not take hits? Not you know, it, can he play under pressure when he's getting hit a lot? You know, and those are questions you gotta ask when it comes to these guys, and they're only questions until you go out there and prove it for 17 weeks. All right, 201-939-4513. A couple business before we get to your calls. Jason, you're going to be up first. Stand by. Make sure you go and subscribe to the Giants Little Podcast. Long-form interviews, Giants players, coaches, front office staff, past and present. JC just did an interview that should be popping up with the Giants Huddle podcast at some point soon. Plus, here from the best analysts covering Big Blue in the NFL, search for Giants Huddle and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or go to Giants.com slash podcast. Don't forget, if you're an Apple podcast, leave that five-star positive review for all of our podcasts. It really helps our podcast grow. The 2023 NFL schedule is officially out. Single-game tickets are on sale now. Don't miss the Giants at MetLife Stadium this year. Visit Giants.com slash tickets to secure your seat today. All right, 201-939-4513. Jason in New Haven, then Doug, then Charlie. Jason, you'll lead us off today. What's up, bud? Hey, how you guys doing? We're good, man. All right, what's going on? Thanks. Thanks for, thanks for taking my call. Um, just a few points, and I could you guys respond, or I could take everything off the air. Nah, nah. Um, uh, we can go back and forth, Jay. It's all good. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll try to make it quick so other people get on. So the first thing I want to say, I love the uh, the guy, the ranking you guys just did. Um, I do think we have the best running back in the division. I yep. think we have the best interior D line in the division. I know people talk about Fletcher Cox and Deron Payne and those dudes, but as far as depth, from Ashawn to Nunez Roaches to Davidson, uh, and, and of course our two starters, I think we have the best D line. So I think we're creeping up amongst some of the teams in the division. Um, where that would lead us at the end of the day, as far as we're concerned, you know, who knows? So um, I just want to put that out there. Okay. Second second play I wanted to talk about that nobody seems to talk about. Um, I know everybody's talking about Waller, which, of course, everybody's excited about, and Paris Campbell, Barkley, of course. Those are no-brainers, Hyatt. But I think one player that I'm excited to see more of is Hodgins. Um, for some reason, once he got on the field last year, our offense kind of just – it looked different when he got on the field. And I really think going forward he could be, I don't know if he's our number one receiver, but I think he'd be a really high-end two receiver. The way he runs routes, I think he was fourth last year in catches as far as catch rate. So he doesn't drop the ball. He's good hands. And the way he, say that again? I said he has good hands. And the way he moves in and out of his cuts, I remember a game last year against Philly, he ran a double move on Bradbury, and he must have had Bradbury by six or seven yards. Now, he's not fast, but just the way he runs his routes, the way he uses his head movement, his shoulders, I think is amazing. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing him. And the last two points, um, the O-line. Now, individually, outside of Thomas, of course, who's all pro, we don't have a top-tier lineman, but I think a good thing going into this season is, let's just say Bredesen starts, or Izudu, of course, you got Lewinsky. Schmitz will be the new starter. But for the most part, four of the players on O-line have played most of the snaps last year. Now, Neil got hurt, of course. Zudu got hurt. But for the most part, most of those starters played outside of Schmitz. So I think part of being a good O-lineman is not so much you got to have five all-pro linemen. I think part of it is gelling and communication. And I think that's going to be uh, a big thing for us going into next year. And then the last point with Shane, um, now, I'm not in the building. I didn't play pro sports. I played college but uh, college football. But what I can say is um, I like the way he's handled all of our negotiations so far in terms of even going back to Julian Love. Uh, now, reportedly, he had made a contract uh, proposal to Julian Love during the season last year, 
And for whatever reason, I guess they couldn't come to agreement, and Shane immediately went off to some to another kind of play or made another um, signing. Um, we all love Barkley, of course, but we all know running backs is a running back position is a brutal position. So um, I like the way he's handling it, especially as a new GM. Um, I like that he's not going to be pressured or bullied into making any bad contract negotiations or extensions. I think that's important going forward, especially that he's a second year GM. So those are some of the points I wanted to bring up. I'll cool. take any of your answers off the air and I appreciate you guys taking my call. Thank you, Jason. You want to hit Hodgins first there, Jason? Yeah, I mean he he didn't ask no questions. He was just kinda, you know, hitting his points, which is which is good. He he has sounds like he's been listening, he's been paying attention. He understands what's going on and he has a good feel of what the Giants are doing. And look, we spoke to Hodgins a little bit earlier. I'm very uh I was very impressed by you know, some questions that I asked him, me being an undrafted guy, him being a six round guy injured early in his career waved several times and then having the wherewithal to stay in stay in it i mean his dad's a former nfl player won a super bowl and but having the wherewithal to stay in it and to understand like you know like i gotta put everything i gotta put everything into this football stuff and it every single day it takes and if it doesn't happen then it might happen the next day he just never knew so he had to keep working his hardest consistently over and over and over again and before he got to the Giants, he was waived, you know, and he was down in his luck, you know, before. And then he comes in and that's that has a lot for me. I, I like to hear stories like that, because when you see the finished product on the field, you're like, oh, OK, this guy is tried. He's tested. He's proven and he's not going to quit on you. He's going to keep giving it his all. And I think that's what you saw from Isaiah Hodgins. So great assessment, Jason. Then And look, the Giants, I think. And I spoke to Dayball a little bit today at lunch. The Giants are bringing in high character guys, mm-hmm. and you can look at that throughout the whole entire roster. And not only is they bringing in talent, in which I think they're checking that box, but the the character of these guys they're tested. They're they're really good, strong, solid men. I think is going to bode very well to how the Giants do this year. And look, I think Joe Shane. I think did he call himself stubborn in one of the press conferences? I think he might have. That might have been a word he used to describe himself. But yeah, I don't think he's easily moved off what his like. He think he makes a decision on what a player's worth. He's willing to go there, maybe go a little bit above that, and then all right, cool. Like, that's it. That's if it. not, then kick rocks. <laughs> exactly. Two zero one nine three nine four five one three. And again, I would not debate if you want to put the Giants ahead of Washington on defensive line. I get that. Dexter and Leonard are great. I would not have any problem with that at all. Let's go to uh, Doug and Glenn Falls. He's up next. Hey, Dougie. Hi, hi, John. What's up? Um, I was reading um, um, some comments that Dan Solomon made about the OTAs, and he gave credit to Jalen Hyatt and and Campbell, but he mentioned a new guy, and I don't. I want your comment, John. This guy named Jalen Jadon Minkins. Minkins, yeah, yeah. Does he really have a chance to make the team? I mean. We got so many people in that room. Yeah, and... yeah, I would be surprised, Doug, if, if he found his way onto the 53. I think he's more of a practice squad candidate. Just to your point, there's so many numbers there. Now, if it turns out that both Wandell and Shepard have to get put on pup to start the year and they're not ready to go, then maybe that might open a window for, for somebody. But given the amount of guys with experience or and or high draft picks on the roster, I think I think it's a tough go for him. But look, the the practice squad's expanded. There's always injuries at wide receiver. You can find your way onto the field. Look at the Giants last year. How many wide receivers did they shuttle through last year? A million. So I think right. that. So I I think that's kind of the the path for Mickens. What kind of talent is he? A possession receiver? Or he's got speed. What what is his what is his athletic? I'm not familiar with this kid. Uh, Mickens, this kid? I believe he's a smaller guy. Let me get his exact his measurements name? for you. His name is uh, Jaden Mickens. Jaden. Yeah, he's a six-year guy. He's only 5'11", 170 pounds. He's been the league in a while. He's kind of bounced around. He's more of a quick speed guy than he is a big guy. So, you know, I think given all the guys the Giants have that can play inside, that might be a tough go for him. But, you know, he'll, he'll give it a shot. That's why he's here. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Doug. Have a good day. Appreciate the call. You as well. Yeah, I'm looking him up now. He's 29 years old, been in the league for a little bit. Yeah, six-year guy I mean, in it's, Washington. It's, first of all, it's so difficult to make an NFL roster. Let's just throw that out there. It's 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 impossible. <laughs> it, it literally is. From from the odds of the kids that are playing youth football, high school football right now, the odds of them making to the NFL is impossible, basically. Impossible. So for a guy to be in his, whatever, sixth, seventh year, 
29 years old with a room as deep as the Giants' room is now, it's impossible. Not that he can't do it, but it's virtually impossible. He does not have an NFL catch. Right. But he has done a lot of kick and punt return. Yeah, but listen. So that's his path. Smelky, I was undrafted. Mm-hmm. I was hurt coming out of college. My senior year was rough. I got to the, to, to the, to the Saints facility with 12 linebackers in the room. It was impossible for me to make that team. But you did. And I did. So when I say impossible, there's there's something that can happen. Were, were, were you like the last, were you like the 53rd guy? I in the think roster, so. Think? Yeah, I think so. I think wow. I was one of the last guys. How many linebackers did he keep? Do you remember? Seven? I, I can name them. It was uh, John DeVilma, Scott Vegeta, Scott Shanley, Jolan Dunbar, Marvin Mitchell, Troy Evans. I was seven. Wow. That's a lot of linebackers. Yep, I was number seven. Yep. Special teams got you on, though, obviously. Oh, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, but, it like, you look at the roster before that. We had Mark Simino in training camp. We had Dan Morgan. I don't even remember Dan Morgan. Yeah, he wore course. a black visor. He played Super Bowl. He, he was with Carolina. We had Anthony yeah. Waters. We had a lot of guys, bro. It was like 12 guys in the linebacker room. You look at that room, and you'll be like, Casillas not making it. You know what I mean? Like, I was the first name to get scratched off. <laughs> you know, like, but... You, like what I what I described with Hodgins, you know, I went through a lot in my, my in college, um, being hurt and then you know kind of bouncing back from that. I had a chip on my shoulder, and I I just wasn't gonna be denied. And there's something to those guys. There's something to those guys that just have it in here and in here that I can't be denied. You know, and and that's how that's how I was when I was in college. That's how I was when I got to the NFL. I just couldn't be denied. I, you're not gonna not play me. You're not gonna cut me. I can't be cut. You know, I had that determination in me. But when you looked at it on paper, undrafted, hurt. You know what I mean? Not a big guy. I was like two twenty five. You could take one more down, by the way. You know, so you could bring him up. You, it's a lot of guys that we're gonna see this year in the NFL. These guys made the impossible possible, right? Yeah. So who knows if Jaden Mays can make a team? It's impossible. But he can do it. <laughs> and like I said, look, we don't know who the Giants or Turners are going to be. If they get to the end of this and they say, look, this guy's our best option on kick and punt return, that might get him on the roster. There you go. Like, it's possible. Yeah, for sure. And that he's a returner. That's why he's here, to return. Yeah. 201-939-4513. Hi, Charlie in Portland, Maine. How are you? Hey, John. Hey, Jason. What, what did you think of the rankings, Charlie? Oh, God. What? Uh, <laughs> let me say... JC, you got to take that chip on your shoulder and put it in your hand. Uh oh. And I think you did that, right? You got a Super Bowl, didn't you? Yes, two. Well, there you go. You took it from the from your shoulder and you put the chip in your hand. Two of them. So, uh, yeah, two of them. So that's what that's what you needed to do. So, because a chip on the shoulder ain't going to do you any good if you don't uh, put it in your hand. But anyway, about the rankings. My God, the our offensive line is the worst offensive line of the division. And here's why. You've have you looked at Wa- have you looked at Washington's offensive line, Charlie? Yes, I have. But they don't have. I mean, we have a rookie center, a rookie. He ain't going to come out there, you know, being uh, pouncy. He's a rookie, and then he's got <clears throat> two mediocre guards beside him, which isn't going to help him much. We have one really good. O lineman, and everyone knows it's Thomas. And then you have Neil, who is like, who the hell knows what this guy's going to do? It's 50 50. If he's going to progress, he's going to stay the same. He has problem with uh, pass rushes who are fast and twitchy. Well, Charlie, and- Charlie, 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 look, look, I, 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 I get what you're saying. I mean, do you know about Andrew Wiley at right tackle for Washington? Do you know about Sam Cosme at right guard for Washington? They're going to cut Andrew Norwell after June 1st. Who's going to be their starting left guard? Chris Paul, Ricky Stromberg, like these are they have they have just as they have just as many question marks as the Giants do, yeah. and the Giants have Andrew Thomas. No, no, no. Washington they don't doesn't. have. We have four question marks on the offense. No, sorry, three on the offensive line. Actually, four because we don't know what a rookie's going to do. <laughs> Glowinski's not. A, you know what Glowinski is? He's not a question mark. He's mediocre. He's a question yeah, but he's mark not a maybe. question mark. If you if you know he's an oh, average good. offensive All line, right. he's average. <laughs> Everybody who's mediocre, we have to put a question mark. But is he going to get better? That's the question, and the answer is no, because he is who he is. So what I'm saying is our offensive line is fourth. 
And the other thing, I didn't hear where you ranked the quarterbacks, but I'm assuming the Giants were third, right? Uh, the Giants were third for J.C., for myself, sure. yep. and Lance. Uh, Paul. Oh, Paul didn't put him second. Paul put him second. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I, I honestly, <laughs> that was Charlie. That was my debate to put Daniel Jones over Dak. And look, and I, because I'm thinking about how who, can you do that? But listen, listen, Charlie. It's because you right. can't really go off of body of work. You can't because it's now. You're projecting forward. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's now. And that was the, how many, the question. How uh, many touchdowns did Dak have last year? But you, 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 didn't, you didn't hear what I just said, how Charlie. How many did uh, Daniel Jones have? He only had 15, 15, I think five, right? And five touchdowns, and five he interceptions. He had 11 the year before, and he had 10. And he, I mean, my God, this guy, I don't, and you, I and somebody, you. This, this last caller was talking about Shane doesn't buckle and he's all this. Well, he buckled on the Daniel Jones stupid contract, paying this guy <laughs> $84 million guaranteed for 15 <laughs> passing touchdowns. Give me a break. Well, Give let me, me let me tell you something. Daniel Jones has been to the playoffs one time, and he's yeah, one and you. one. And Dak Prescott has been to the playoffs, I think, six or seven times, and he's only he's only won twice. So yeah. I've watched Dak Prescott play very bad football in a lot of games, right? So if you go body of work, I think you got to give the nod to Dak Prescott. But this is not what we're doing here. Dak is two we're, and four. You're we're not away. going with body of work. You're going with who has the best quarterback now. And the debate for me was Jalen Hurts was definitely number one. The debate for me is right now, who is better? Dak Prescott at his age or uh, uh, Daniel Jones at his age? That is the question. And <laughs> I think that's a, a fair answer. You don't think that's a question? No, not at all. Daniel well, Jones Dan, is uh, Dak, Dak Prescott Curious. led the league in interceptions last year and missed three, two games, three games? Mm, two or three yeah, games? More than that. I don't yeah, want a quarterback that throws interceptions, of, Charlie, that loses three out of games. Four years, three out of four years, J.C., Jones has been injured. All right? Last year was the only year, only year that he wasn't injured. So, look, I, if Jones, and if, 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 if I knew what Howell was going to be, I would say how would be better than Jones. But oh, come on, Thank Charlie. you, Charlie. See, you, all, so you can <laughs> see now you make some decent points. We don't agree with them, but but at least they have some sense behind them. Yes. Uh, Sam Howell. I mean, come on. Come on. I mean, you were trying to make a point from a little bit earlier. No, Sam, look, Sam Howell <laughs> might be fine, but you but it's inconceivable to rank him ahead of Daniel Jones no, before he's started def- more than one not. NFL game. Definitely not. But that's what makes this list so hard because it like football is a team game. Yep. Like the running backs will be boo boo without an offensive line. That's just how it is. You know, if the if the receivers don't have a solid quarterback to throw the ball to, good luck. Right? <laughs> yeah. If the DBs don't have a, a defensive line and linebackers to cause havoc up front, good luck with covering for six, seven seconds. You know, it's a team game, so it's really hard to do these things. And I put, I, I mean, I've been th- looking at it since a couple nights ago and last night and even this morning. I've been looking and it, it's so hard to rank. But with, with that being said, I feel like we, we all did a pretty good job in how the numbers came out if you look at the teams in the division. I think there's a clear cut winner in the division in 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 the in the uh, excuse me the Philadelphia Eagles. I think Dallas is right behind, and I think the Giants, like we said, they're gaining ground. Yeah, I think that's exactly how I look at it too. They're gaining ground, and then even though they're gaining ground, the Commanders are not too far behind the Giants. You know, and we'll see how this year goes. I, I expect it to be. A lot different than last year, given the turnover of every year of what teams make the playoffs. Some teams regress, some teams get better. And I'm hoping Giants are the one team that step up and for the free, uh, or the Dallas are one of the teams that step back. You know, because it's going to happen. Who knows who it's going to be, though, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I doubt three teams from this division is going to make the playoffs again. Actually, I'll put money on it that it won't happen. The problem is that the NFC is not very good. So, I mean, would would it surprise you if only the division winners from the North and South make it? That, uh, gosh, you got to really go through these divisions. Like, look, the Packers, the Bears. (sighs) Detroit is going to be good. I think Detroit's going to be good. Minnesota's kind of the wild card team They're always that type of wild card team. Mm -hmm. They're they're always a 10, 
at least a 10 win team, but how good are they with those 10 wins? Yeah, you're right, 100%. Because yeah, if you come tight. out the NFC East with 10 wins, you're a damn good football team. Hey, look, very rarely, though, <laughs> to your point, and I think you're right about this, we talk about this every year, half the playoff teams change from year to year. It was seven last year. I know, and half the teams will change. So what's the chances that three out of the seven that don't change are all from the NFC East? Right. Probably small. <laughs> right. It's probably a small chance that happens. So you're right. 201-939-4513. We got two more calls with Skiza Man over behind folks. Sorry about that, but I'll make sure we get your calls in. Scott of New Mexico, Scotty Do. Hi guys, how are you doing today? What's up? All right. Uh, first of all, do I always have to follow Charlie? This is the fourth time that <laughs> I've tried to make a point. I always feel always are right behind him. Scott, you should be happy. It sets a very low bar. You know, it's, <laughs> okay. it, it, it takes all the pressure off We want to hear anybody else now, but you're good, though. Yes, Go ahead, exactly. brother. Well, I, I like Charlie, but sometimes <laughs> nah, he makes points that don't really hold water. But I have a category you guys didn't mention. Yes. And the category I have is who is the most impactful player you can't afford to lose that would skew all your numbers that you that you've made so far, which are, I, and that, that, cause that player will, and I can do this for you a little bit, just to give you an example, not including the quarterback. I'm assuming because not, the quarterback's always the it, most important. It right. not necessarily has to be the quarterback. For example, on Dallas, you take Micah Parsons out off the team. How good is Dallas? You uh, take McCor- they, I mean, they, they still have a pretty good defense, man. I, I doubt they'll be as good without Michael. Well, Parsons. they won't be as good, but let me put it this way. If I'm Dallas and, you know, the devil shows up on my doorstep and says you can either lose Micah for 17 games or Dak Prescott for 17 games. I'm taking Micah. I'm taking Sorry. Micah off the field for 17 yeah. games. Sorry, dude. Right. And the other, I mean, if you take McLaurin off Washington, how good is Washington? Uh, there's one impactful player on each team you can't afford to lose. How about Philly? Use all your numbers. I, I think I, I think that's a fair question. Who would that guy be for Philly? For Philly, uh, it's going to surprise you. Most people would think it's Jalen Hurts. I think it would be somebody like Jason Kelsey, the center for Philadelphia. I think uh, Philly's be- built that such a good roster. I'm not sure they have one guy that would, if they lost them, the whole thing would fall apart yeah. because well, they're so there, deep. There's, there's no better player on the offensive line than Jason Kelsey. Lane Johnson uh, might have an argument there, but look, Jason Mulata's Kelsey is good. very yeah. good. Right. And then uh, the fourth team, we talk about the Giants, whether it's Daniel Jones or Dexter Lowe. Oh, no. See, I have, I, have, I have a different name for you. You know, okay. who, you know who my Giant players they couldn't afford to lose? Andrew Thomas. Oh. Well, that's a good choice, too. So because then you're sitting there. I mean, who, who would be your left tackle? Right, because uh, Tyrod have, Taylor, you, he's won a lot of football move games a in the NFL. Two left tackle, and then put somebody else at right he, tackle. You, well, right, but exactly. he made no, he made some good points because. Well, I was thinking first you were like who you know who would be the most impactful player that taking him out. I went to quarterback right away, but now you got to really kind of think about it because no offense to Daniel Jones and I love him and I love that he you know he got a deal and all that, but you take him out. With the same type of offense that you would plug Tyrod, I don't see yeah, that much of a drop off there. I think Tyrod would be fine. I think he but, would too. But that's that's the point I'm really trying to make because your numbers are great. I listened to uh, yesterday with Paul and today with you guys, and I think they were all, all spot on. But I always think in terms of you lose one central player and everything sort of falls apart. Scott, you and that just was get, the you, point I was trying to make. And you just get and thank you for the call, Scott. You just gave me okay, the idea. Thanks. That's a good point. We're, we're going to make that a show. I like that. We're going to yeah. make that a show. We'll, we'll, we'll do that as a theme show. Player that the team can least afford to lose on offense and defense for all the division teams. So Scott was complaining about following up Charlie. Now we're basing a show. Oh, yeah, we're going to base a, sh- a show off, off of Scott's of question. question. Yeah. Look at that. And Scott, I, I, see how things work out if you wait and be patient yeah. and get through the BS? Because I'm not sure. <laughs> would, I, would I pick Jalen Hurts for Philly? He is such an impact on their running game. I would probably would. I, I think it changes I think he, what they do. He's that guy. I think we saw that kind of when he wasn't there. Yeah, but I wouldn't pick a quarterback for Washington, and I wouldn't pick a quarterback. I wouldn't pick the quarterback for the Giants either. Believe it or not. Yeah, I think he was right with Andrew Thomas. Well, well I said Andrew Thomas. He said, said Dexter Andrew Lawrence. Thomas. He said Dexter Lawrence. Yeah. Okay. That's a, that's a, a argument right there. I you like the even, I like you the even de- argue with Dory Jackson. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Corners are... <laughs> that might actually... Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, right. I think that's the first of what I was a Great, great question. Great, great comments, man. And now you got both of our heads kind of buzzing. And uh, look, that's a that's a great, um, you know, show that we can do. 
and man that that's going to lead up to some great discussions man yeah I'm maybe we can do that maybe you and lance can do that next thursday when you okay. guys are on together we're we going to do what the nfc east yeah we do the nfc east or are we going to do the whole league no <laughs> he's no. Hey, Tom's like yeah that. nfc i could do the mc okay all right final show call of the show is cliff in uh, new york he's up next hey cliff hey guys thanks for a great show um uh I've been thinking about uh, something you said, John, it might have been before even free agency started about the possibility of taking a step backward and, uh, uh, record-wise. Mm-hmm. And I'm, think, I'm thinking um, I'm more optimistic about that not happening. And a lot of that was based on um, the uh, guys from last year that were hurt and didn't get that many snaps, plus this year's rookies uh, and the guys from the two drafts before that that have already proven themselves. And uh, Jonathan put a little cold water on that um, with those guys being major factors with the rookie wall. And so I'm wondering if the rookie wall gets moderated just by not giving them in-game snaps as much before the bye, or if uh, the practice time and everything else uh, just takes a Good toll question. anyway. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Go ahead. And, and, and the other thing is uh, – the schedule to me, you know, I saw because we're pushing uh, people to buy tickets, I saw the home schedule apart from the away schedule, and it looks a lot better than the away schedule. So uh, <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm looking at 11 and 6, but go ahead. Well, that rookie wall, Thank man, you, Cliff. Appreciate the call, man. It's, it's a combination of so many different things. It's not just a physical grind. It's, it's the mental grind. And it's like your spirit and your soul. Like, you know, because you got to be dedicated in every type of way to this game that we call football when you're a player. Um, and the rookie wall is the combination of those things just kind of hitting you in your face. You know, your physical is kind of tapping out, your mental is hanging on by a thread, and your spirit is like, all right, man, we got to push through this. We got to make it. You know, it's a combination of all of those things. And that's not about how much you've played, really. It's it's just, it's the practices. It's the, you know, the amount of Emmys you had, the amount of times you got cursed out as a rookie. You know, like, you're on practice squad or whatever the case is. Like, it's just a lot that goes into it, man. And it's it's hard. And, you know, at this point in your life, You've never played more than if you win a national championship, you play 13 games, I think, total. Mm-hmm. Yep. If you combine the preseason games with the NFL, that's 20 games yep. that you're playing. Um, yeah. That's 20 games. So you're week 12, you already played 15, 16 games, 14, 15 games. You get the preseason. Because you're playing as a rookie, as a young guy in the preseason. Yeah, you're right. And you're practicing hard, you're not getting no reps off. So the rookie wall is a real thing, and I don't really think that it matters if you're playing a lot or a little. I just think if you're part of the grind and you're waking up every day, going to practice, and you're working hard and going to workouts and eating the same food over and over again, all of that stuff gets redundant, man. And look, it's a real thing. And, you know, I hope the Giants can keep the rookies kind of going throughout this process because I think the rookies are going to play right. this year for the Giants. And I hope the rookie wall is not that bad for them. No, us. in terms of taking a step back, I think the Giants are a better team this year. But just because you're a better team that doesn't necessarily mean you can have a better record. Right. Like, we've been through this before, right? Mm-hmm. Just to give you an example. Last year, we talked about the Giants winning all their close, so many of their close games. They finished 9 7 and 1. They had a minus six point differential. They gave up six more points than they scored. The Packers had gave, the, gave up the same amount of points the Giants did, 371. They scored five more points. They were minus one. They were eight and nine last year. The Giants were 9 7 and 1. Yep. That's literally two or three plays that can swing games. Right? Go to another team, the Saints. They were just minus 15 last year, right? That's not, it's only nine point differential than what the Giants had. They finished seven and 10. Yep. You know, so a couple points here and there can can make a big difference in terms of, or a couple plays rather, can make a big difference with your record, even if your point differential, you know, is either really good or, or not the best. And then so, you look at the NFC North, what the Vikings did, they were minus three or six. Yeah, but they went, they, they went 13. They games. won a the division. They right. were number 
three, two seed? They were number number three seed behind San Fran, right? Yeah. We're number three seed. Detroit fin- finishes with a 26 positive net differential and doesn't make the playoffs. <laughs> no, they made it. They lost in the, they, they lost in the first round. The Lions didn't. Oh, no, you're right. No, they didn't they make did it. it. Yeah, they was, was, that they last week, they got eliminated. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but they that's right. They but that's out what I'm there. saying. Like they, yeah. they, they ended up they weren't playing for anything, but they beat the Packers. They beat the and Packers and the knocked them out. That's right. Yep. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So it's a weird thing. That's it's why. So weird. But look, the NFC is wide open. The NFC is not the AFC now. Right. And I said this a million times. I know we got a wrap here, and I'm sorry we went extra like long today. Way and it's today. my it's my bed. Um, you know, this is not the AFC where you have Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Herbert, Herbert yep. Patrick Keep Mahomes, going. like. <laughs> <laughs> Keep Russell Wilson, like Deshaun yeah. Watson, like Tua, Tua, like it's crazy. Aaron Rodgers, who I didn't mention, like it's not the AFC. So you hope that they can figure things out. JC, yep. good stuff to him, man. man. Yep. All right, thanks for being with us tomorrow. It is, I believe, me and Cross. We're gonna do a NFC East uh, player draft and put together some rosters. Another like fun exercise. So I'm tune into that. Check one. it out. We'll see you tomorrow on Big Blue Kickoff Live. Have a good one, everybody.